A Wall Street Journal investigation has found that thousands of officials across the federal government reported owning stocks that could rise or fall with decisions made by their own agencies. According to the journal, more than 2,600 officials at various agencies disclosed stock investments while these companies were lobbying agencies for policies that benefited them. That's more than one in five senior federal employees across 50 federal agencies included in this investigation. Joining us now to discuss is former Ohio State Senator and host and executive producer of her new daily news show, Unbossed, premiering on October 17th, 1 p.m. on the TYT Network. Senator Nina Turner, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Bree Joy. Good to be here with you and Robbie. It's good to have you. So, Senator Turner, tell us a little bit more about, about what's going on here. We've obviously covered some of the back and forth over this new law that Democrats are trying maybe to pass that would ban this kind of behavior. Nancy Pelosi has been on the record of being somewhat ambivalent about uh, precluding people from doing exactly this kind of thing. Uh, give us some background about what's going on here. You're being kind about her being ambivalent. I mean, she just doesn't want the law to pass. If she did, she would be working harder to do it. The Wall Street Journal has done an excellent job uncovering that this goes beyond just members of Congress. It is members of the executive branch of government who are positioning themselves financially off of the taxpayer's dime. And it is wrong, it is corrupt. It is wrong for the members of Congress, and it is also wrong for them to do as well. And there's already federal law on the books right now. Let us just start with following the law as it is, and then introduce stronger laws, or they can introduce stronger legislation that will pass into law. But there are laws on the books right now that prohibit government employees from benefiting financially from their work. But we see that it is uh, heavy in the executive branch as well as the Congress. And it is because, I mean, how's the Congress going to tell members of the executive branch not to do it when they themselves are doing it too? So we do need stronger laws and policies, but let's start with answering to or honoring rather the law that is already the laws that are already on the books. Right, because this goes beyond uh, really what we've been talking about, uh, you know, time and time again about the the members of Congress, et cetera, who who have made decisions or who have stocks and benefit, you know, trying to benefit from Pfizer, the pandemic, or something like that. Um, Nancy Pelosi herself, because this is not just political figures. This is this is agency. This is so. According to this, the Wall Street Journal report, you know, there was an official at the EPA uh, purchasing oil and gas stocks. There was a Food and Drug Administration person um, owning uh, stocks in food companies that's on a no-buy list. So, so these, several of these, uh, the Defense Department, uh, defense company, uh, a person who worked there has uh, ties to defense company. And many of these agencies have, right, there, there's laws already, and then these agencies have, you know, in the same way, uh, uh, many companies would have policies just for employees that they can't have really egregious conflicts of interest. I mean, I disclose, you know, on the show when we talk, if we're talking about someone who I think is a donor to the magazine I write for, you know, we would disclose that. Uh, there are just policies of that sort. And this goes, so this goes so far beyond, is my point, beyond even just our, our political figures who are at least subject to some scrutiny. This is, this is the rotting of our government from the inside out. That's exactly right, Robbie. And these people are political figures. They may not be elected, but they work for the public. And because Big Mama and Big Papa does not have the same type of insider information so that they can boost their finances, these folks should not be allowed to do it on the taxpayer's dime. If they want to do that, then they need to quit their jobs. And furthermore, Robbie, the point that you were making about rules. So yes, we have laws and then we have, they have policies within these different agencies. And according to the Wall Street Journal report, some of these agencies get to determine what policies they're going to follow internally. Like they can soften the policy to allow their, or interpret it in a way that allows their employees to get off with a slap on the wrist if they are even a chastised for it anyway. So this is simple. This is not complicated. Don't work for the government, and then you can be a free-wielding American citizen, and you can do all the trading that you want. But you know why they won't do that? Because then they won't have the extra special insider information. This is corrupting. It, 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 it further erodes trust with our our organizations and our and, and the federal government it just further erodes trust of institutions 
it is wrong and it needs to be corrected right away, starting with the members of Congress and reverberating through every single crevice of the federal government. Yeah, a couple of takeaways here because I mean this is this is kind of juicy stuff. I mean the conflict of interest here it does not go go above the head I think of the average American. Uh, l listen to this. W the, the article notes that while the government was ramping up, I was just going to read this part. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> of big technology companies, more than 1,800 federal officials reported owning or trading at least one of four major tech stocks: Meta Platforms, that's Facebook, Alphabet Inc., Google, Apple Inc., or Amazon.com. More than 200. Senior EPA officials, nearly one in three, reported investments in companies that were lobbying the agency, the EPA. <laughs> EPA employees and their families collectively owned between $400,000 and nearly $2 million in shares of oil and gas companies on average yeah. each year between 2016 and 2021. Well, and, and just, <laughs> just sticking with the tech example, uh, for example, sure. I know people at Twitter, I've talked to comms people at Twitter who are very against the proposed regulations. They say they're going to benefit Facebook. Mm -hmm. And well, if you look, <laughs> their employees of the regulatory agencies own stock in Facebook. You know, how, how can we, I guess, how do you, how can we trust the regulatory apparatus to behave in the public interest when it is so conflicted in this way on a personal level for the people involved. And the Defense Department, really let's, right. let's not even get to the implications. Yeah, the, the, the implications. I'm sorry, go ahead, Senator Turner. No, I'm sorry, I was just answering, Robert, we can't trust it under these circumstances. Now, the circumstances can change very quickly. They need to follow and strengthen the policy. What good is a policy if you're not going to follow it? So they have policies. They need to follow those policies and strengthen them. We need to follow the laws as they exist right now and create stronger laws. Mm. Well, Senator Turner, you are hosting and executive producing your own daily news show, Unbossed, on the TYT Network, premiering on October 17th. What can we expect to see you cover over there? Well, I'm so excited about it, and thank you, for Hill Rising, for allowing me to come on and talk about the show. And we're going to talk about corruption, similar stories like what we're talking about today, and those systems. And to to talk to the, the folks about the fact that just because a system exists today doesn't mean it has to exist tomorrow, that we, the people, definitely have the power to change the system, that we don't have to accept things as they are. We can understand them as they are, but we can dream a bigger dream. And so we are going to talk about those issues. We're going to also have human interest stories. And Bree, you know I love my quotes, so I will definitely be doing a quote of the day because things seem so daunting right now. Just seeing things are very hard for people. You know, I was just at the store yesterday. Eighteen uh, a carton containing uh, a carton containing eighteen eggs, eighteen eggs, seven dollars and seventy nine cents at the mm. grocery store. Butter is up, gas is up, everything is up, and so people are feeling rightfully so, especially among the working class, heavy heavy things are happening in this country. So not only are we going to talk about those heavy things, I also want to bring some levity to the moment and just remind folks that we, the people, do have the power to make that change. We just have to have the courage to do so and be willing to make some sacrifices along the way. And things can and they do change. We do have a history of that in this country, although sometimes it doesn't feel that way. Hmm. Well, Senator Nina Turner, thank you so much for joining us and good luck with your new show. Thank you, Robbie, and thank you, Bridget. And we'll have more rising right after this.